Exodus chapter number 17. We'll begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says this. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of Sin. After their journeys according to the commandment of the Lord and pitched in Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide with me? Wherefore do you tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water. The people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee the elders of Israel and thy rod, wherewith thou smotest the river, take in thine hand and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of all the elders of Israel. Uh, and he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the chiding of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Let's pray. Our Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. Thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you for the open door for our folks to go over and preach at the jail this morning. Thank you for being a good God. Lord, we thank you for the word of God. It's a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. It is, Lord, uh, the very uh, final authority for our lives, and it shares with us everything we need. And Father, I pray that we'd live by faith, walk by faith, and trust you, and you'd grow our faith. Now, I pray for the next few minutes that, Lord, you'd put a hedge about us. Pray you'd bind the powers of hell. And God, we certainly do pray you'd speak to hearts this morning. God, we pray if anybody come in under a heavy load, Lord, they'd get their eyes fixed upon Jesus and they'd get there hungering for the land that you've gone to prepare for us. And God, you'd lift their load today. God, if there be anybody that comes in this morning hurting, they'd find the great physician can heal them. And God, we certainly pray if there be anybody in our midst today unsaved, lost without Jesus that today would be the day of their salvation. Use this unworthy vessel. Help us from the word of God. Glorify thy name, Satan. We'll bless you for it, for it's in the holy name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to several things from the text. I want you to notice, first of all, verse number one, there's a trauma. The Bible said there was no water for the people to drink. Now, I know we, we don't believe this. We can go without food for a little while. But we can't go without water. And here they are, they are facing a trauma. There is no water. You may be here today, you may be uh, breathing God's air, walking on God's earth, but you may be facing a trauma. I've got good news. There's no trauma too big for God. I've got good news. There's no trauma taking you that God didn't know it was coming. And I've got good news. God's already got the answer for your trauma this morning. But we do see they had a trauma. Now, I don't want to make light of that. Uh, friend, when you're thirsty and have nothing to drink and your mouth gets dry and you feel like your tongue's cleaving to the roof of your mouth, uh, you're in a mess, and they're in a mess this morning. Verse number one, we see the trauma. But look what happens. They do what I've seen a lot of Baptists do. Notice the tempting in verse number two. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses, saying, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do you tempt the Lord? Well, now I've got news for you this morning. If you came to get help from Brother Doug, you're going to leave out of here helpless. Hmm? I have no water for you. I've just got the water from the Word of God. But the Lord can help you this morning. We see they're tempting the Lord. Notice, Moses said, why do you chide with me? That word chide means to scold, to reproach, to admonish, to correct, or chastising. Now, they're taking out their trauma on the man of God. Can I say there's been many a preacher's man of pulpit, uh, and before the door's locked on the way out, people are 
chewing him out. They're scolding him. They don't like uh, what's going on in their lives. Uh, it's not the man of God's fault, friend. Uh, uh, listen, uh, the trauma may have come to draw you closer to God, uh, or the trauma may have come because you're not right with God, uh, but it's not the man of God's fault. Most of the time it's our fault. Amen. We see the trauma. We see the tempting. And then again, notice the thirsting in verse number 3. And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses, huh? It's amazing. You find out a lot about people's character when they go through troubles. One thing that blesses my heart, I can't imagine the pain Miss Veronica's been through. But her testimony, she spoke, she never turned her back on Jesus. I've never heard her complain or murmur what lot had befallen her life. I've never heard her blame God. This crowd did. They began to murmur. That word murmur means to complain or gripe or grouch or protest uh, or to whisper and spread rumors uh, or hearsay. Uh, uh, there's a lot of people get mad at God, get mad at the things of God, and they start little rumors. If we get rid of that preacher, we'd have better things. Hmm? We see uh, the thirsting. And can I say this? Storms cause one to either believe more in God or to become bitter. God never allows a storm in your life to make you bitter. Most of the time, He allows them to make us better. But when storms come, it ought to increase our faith. We ought to trust in God more. Notice the treasure in verse number 6. The Bible said, Behold, I'll stand before thee there on the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And water did so on the side of the elders. Uh, Moses did so on the side of the elders of Israel. What happened? Uh, God told Moses to smote a rock. He did, and waters gushed out. Can you imagine the river that came out of that rock, Brother Donald, that fed uh, what some people estimate between 6 million and 10 million people? Fed, uh, uh, it, 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 the water came out it, it quenched all their thirst and all their livestock huh yeah. Ooh, what a blessing we see the treasure can I say God has given us a treasure of water this morning Amen. the precious promises of the word of God uh, uh, the washing of the water is what regenerated us and thank God that we've been bought again born again by an incorruptible seed which is the word of God what a blessing to have this treasure that will quench every spiritual thirst we'll ever have. Amen. But then notice the timing. Look down verse number 8. Then came Amalek, Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. Can I say battles often follow blessings? God blessed them. And they didn't hardly get their thirst quenched. And here come a battle. And can I say, thank God for those mountaintop experiences. But many times, waiting on the other side of that mountain, there's a battle we're going to have to face. I'm interested in verse number 6. God told Moses to go stand before, uh, he said, I'll stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb. And he said, thou shalt smite the rock, and there, there shall come water out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so on the side of the elders of Israel. I want to preach on this thought. I want to preach on, oh, what a rock. Oh, what a rock. Huh? And there was many rocks there, no doubt. But this rock was different than any other rock. Any other rock there's ever been, this rock's different. Huh? Oh, what a rock. Uh, God said, go over there and stand, uh, go over there and smoke that rock. Uh, and Moses went and smote the rock, and out gushed the waters. Uh, I say, oh, what a rock. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, this rock is special. Uh, why is it special, preacher? Uh, because of the symbol it represents. Uh, 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 listen, uh, there's no mistake in the Word of God. Uh, God told Moses to smote a rock, uh, and this rock represents uh, a greater rock, my dear friends. Uh, uh, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10 4 uh, and did all drink of the same spiritual drink uh, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them uh, and that rock was Christ uh, uh, we realize this rock is a picture uh, 
of the rock of ages, uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and anybody that's uh, going to heaven uh, has had to drink from that spiritual drink, uh, that spiritual water that came from the rock of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, what a blessing. Isaiah 53 says, uh, Surely he hath borne our griefs uh, and carried our sorrows. Uh, yet did we see, esteem him stricken. That rock got struck. Uh, Jesus got struck. Uh, uh, the Bible says, and smitten of God uh, and afflicted uh, but he was wounded for our transgressions uh, he was bruised for our iniquities uh, the chastisement of our peace was upon him uh, that rock on Horeb uh, got smote uh, and come from it uh, what was needed by the people uh, Jesus got smote on the rock uh, on the cross of Calvary uh, our rock was cleft uh, and from him uh, uh, poured the blood of the uh, of the redeemer uh, and our sins are washed by the blood of the lamb uh, what a blessing uh, he got smitten uh, that you and I could benefit from it uh, hey it cost him everything uh, and through him we gain everything uh, what a blessing uh, Jesus our rock uh, changed our lives uh, if you've never been to the rock you don't know what I'm talking about I'm talking about old water rock oh this rock is wonderful because of the symbol it represents uh, can I say that Moses is commanded here to smite the rock later on they come to another place where they're thirsty and have no water and Moses acts a lot like I act. He gets a little upset. And Brother Brian, this time God tells him to speak to the rock. But he's so upset with them murmuring and backstabbing and complaining and griping. I mean, God delivered them out of Egypt. Uh, God parted the Red Sea. Uh, God made the bitter waters of Mara sweet. Uh, God has already uh, uh, sent them uh, uh, water from the rock. Uh, God rains down manna from heaven. Uh, God sends quail in so they can have meat to eat. Uh, I mean, God has fed every need. Uh, God has conquered every foe. Uh, God has been for them. Uh, and yet again, and they're murmuring and complaining. Sounds like us, doesn't it? I mean, how many times has God blessed us? I mean, He saved us, forgave us all our sins, made us citizens of heaven. Hey, He not only saved us, He blessed us and done great things for us. But yet, if we're not careful, we'll start complaining. God tells him to speak to the rock, but Moses in his anger smites the rock again. Now, Despite Moses' disobedience, God still allowed water to come through, and he helped his people. But it cost Moses. He never got to see the promised land because he disobeyed God. Now hear me. Jesus was smote on Calvary. We're never to smite the rock again. We're just to speak to the rock. Are you listening? Uh, and we can call on him in prayer anytime we want to, friend. Uh, we can speak to our rock. What a blessing. First uh, uh, Samuel chapter 2 and verse number 2 says, There is none holy as the Lord, uh, for there is none beside thee. Uh, neither is there any rock like our God. Uh, oh, what a rock because of the symbol it represents. Can I say this? Oh, what a rock because of the salvation it secures. These people were saved from their trauma. They'd have died of thirst. They were saved because of that rock. And you and I that are saved today are saved because of our rock, Jesus Christ. Uh, the Bible says in Psalms 95, 01, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Romans 1, 16, uh, Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation uh, to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first uh, and also to the Greek. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 says, For God hath not appointed us uh, to wrath, but uh, to obtain salvation by the Lord. Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there uh, salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given, by, uh, given among men whereby we must be saved. Uh, I'm here to tell you, if you're going to heaven because you've been saved by the blood of the Lamb, uh, you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, God smote him to save us, uh, and you can be saved today. Uh, our rock is wonderful because of the salvation it secures. Uh, I'm glad I got born again one day. 
been 50 years ago and I've never been sorry that I got saved. Now, I've been sorry, but I've never been sorry because that I've got saved, huh? I'm thankful for our rock. What a rock. Well, because of the symbol that represents, because of the salvation it secures. I said, oh, what a rock, because of the strength it provides. Mm -hmm. Psalms 18.2, this is Miss Brandy's verse. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation, my high tower. Can I say? Amen. I have the strength to go on because I'm on the rock. He's the strength. He's the rock. He's the one that helps us. huh? Oh, what a rock. I bless the Lord for the strength he provides. How does Miss Veronica deal with life and the lot that has befallen her? She's on a rock that gives her strength. How's Miss Crystal going through all them treatments she's going through right now? Uh, now think about it. This darling lady is going through treatments that a few years ago she thought going through those treatments, that, that was it. It was over. But because of those treatments now, her bone marrow has been just about destroyed. She's going through treatments all the time. Yeah. Now she's got these three darling children and then she's got the baby. Can you imagine being a mama with a one-year-old and a mama of three teenagers and sit around and think about I'm going through these treatments and if these treatments don't work it'll turn out bad how's she doing that how's she able how's she able to come to church how's she able to sing in a choir how's she able to get up and sing special how's she able to do that she's got strength from another world uh, she's put her faith in the rock I'm saying oh what a rock uh, her, her confidence isn't in the doctors. Her confidence isn't in uh, science. Her confidence is uh, in the great physician who gave doctors the wisdom, gave the science available, uh, and knows that God is well able to help her through all this. Amen. She's not a fool. She's not sitting around saying, well, I'm not going to take any treatments. I'm going to trust God. Well, you're going to die. Uh, God winks at our ignorance. Who do you think gave the doctors the wisdom and gave all the technology and all that? Her face not in the doctors. Her face in the one that gave the doctors what they need to help her. Amen. She draws strength from the rock. I'm glad he provides strength. Strength that people didn't know they had. Hmm? You know, Brother Ron, I think sometimes he allows us to go through things so he, he can show us how strong we are in him. Because how many of you have ever heard this? I'm not worthy of the Lord. I don't deserve the Lord. I'm nothing without the Lord. Well, sometimes the Lord just shows you how much He has done for you and shows you you are able to do things by His grace. Huh? I never in my life ever heard they take a kneecap out of somebody. But they did. And you know what? You haven't missed many churches services over it you certainly haven't missed any meals over it I mean God's been good to you and where'd you get that strength from him huh uh -uh. I'm glad for the strength our rock provides you know why this world's going crazy they don't know our rock uh heaven help you if you're putting faith in politicians or if you're putting faith in somebody running a company or something I'm telling you this world's going chaotic the psalmist said when the foundations of the earth are out of course we're there yes, sir. can I say this my, my strength doesn't come from this world it comes from my rock Amen. oh what a rock for the strength he provides oh what a rock, rock but for the stand he requires uh, Isaiah said this in Isaiah 28 16 therefore thus saith the Lord God behold I lay in Zion for a foundation a stone a tried stone a precious cornerstone a sure foundation he that believeth shall not make haste 
Ephesians 2.20 says, And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. 1 Peter 2 says, Verse 6, Wherefore also is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Uh, unto you therefore which believe he is precious. Uh, uh, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Uh, uh, can I say, Because of our great rock, he requires us to make a stand hmm? we're to stand on the foundation that he's laid he said the Lord Jesus said in Matthew 7 24 therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock and the rain descended floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock you know why we still got a church preaching the word of God in 2024 because of the foundation. It was built upon the rock. Oh, the church has faced the winds. It's faced floods. It's faced uh, 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 all kinds of storms. Uh, but we're still sailing, friend, uh, because we got the right foundation. Uh, our foundation's not on a man-made religion. Uh, our foundation isn't on a statue or an idol of a fat man with no clothes on. Uh, our foundation uh, isn't in uh, uh, religion. Uh, our foundation is the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and his church has been built upon the rock. Uh, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, we're stand, we've got a foundation to stand on. Can I say we've got fundamentals to stand on? I do not apologize for what we believe. We're an old-fashioned, independent, fundamental, Bible-believing church. When I say Bible believing, I'm talking about the one that God pinned down for English speaking people, the King James Bible. Huh? Hey, uh, 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 I do not make apologies for the foundation that we believe in the local church. Uh, uh, the Lord Jesus died for the church. He loved it and died for it, gave himself for it. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, I'm for the local, visible, uh, autonomous church. Uh, I'm for a church uh, uh, that glorifies the Lord Jesus Christ as our head. Uh, we do not have a corporate head. We do not have a figurehead. Uh, we do not have a, a board that we answer to. Uh, hey, the Lord Jesus Jesus is the head of the church uh, and we uh, have been fitly framed together. Uh, what a blessing to be a part of his local church. Uh, I do not apologize. Uh, I do not apologize uh, for the fundamental we stand on. We're saved by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, not of works lest any man should boast. Uh, baptism won't save you. Church membership won't save you. Uh, uh, doing works and giving money won't save you. Uh, but Jesus will save you. Uh, hey, I'm not ashamed of the security of the believer. I believe once somebody's in Christ, they never get out. They're sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Hey, I'm not apologetic for the fact that we've got some standards that we go by. And our standards are based on the Bible. We're not unequally yoked with unbelievers. We don't hold hands with them and sing kumbaya. Listen, not everything calls itself a church is a church. I don't run with a crowd that don't believe the book, uh, that don't believe in the Lord, uh, and don't serve Him. Uh, there's some fundamentals that we need to uh, absolutely stand upon. Can I say this? Uh, we're to stand on the foundation, we're to stand on the fundamentals, and we're to stand on the faith. Jude said in verse number 3, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. I boldly proclaim we're still standing on that same faith. Uh, bless the Lord. Oh, what a rock. He's a rock you can stand on. Hmm? Uh, Psalmist said, the Lord reached down and picked him up out of the miry clay and set him on a rock. Established his goings. Put song of praise in his lips. Uh, I'm glad when I got saved. I got saved by the Lord Jesus Christ and my life has been built upon a rock. Amen. And his name is Jesus. Oh, what a rock. Can I say, oh, what a rock because of the security it ensures. Exodus 33, 22, Moses desired to see the Lord. And this is what the Lord said. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passes by, that I will put thee in the cliff of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. Moses wanted to see the Lord. The Lord said, no man can see me and live. He said, but what I'm going to do? 
I'm going to put you in a cleft of the rock. I'm going to cover it with my hand. And I'm going to walk by. And when I walk by, I'm going to lower my hand. And you can see my glory. See, when you seek his face, he'll show you his glory. You know why a lot of you haven't seen his glory? You're too busy seeking his hand. What he can do for you. You're not seeking him. You seek him, you'll see his glory. huh? I'm glad for the security our rock affords us. He put him in the cleft of the rock. Jesus was cleft on Calvary. Can I say they thrust a spear in his side and out was, uh, 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 came water and blood. Can I say uh, the Lord Jesus became our rock and the Lord uh, puts us in the rock uh, and puts his hand over it. Uh, hey, uh, Big Doug, he puts us uh, in that cleft uh, in the side up near the heart of God. Uh, you say where are we today? Uh, we're seated in heavenly places. You left out the rest of it in Christ Jesus. Uh, I'm in him. Uh, he's in me through the Holy Spirit. Uh, I'm glad his hand over me. Uh, hey, He said he put me in his hand and his hand's in the Father's hand uh, and no man can pluck me out of the Father's hand. Uh, what a blessing for the security uh, that we have. You realize uh, uh, Jesus would have to be not off the throne and coat cut open wide for us to lose all he's done for us uh, and I got good news uh, he's alive forevermore uh, no one's going to kick him off the throne uh, he has the keys to death and hell uh, oh what a savior uh, as long as my high priest is alive uh, I have refuge uh, and he's never going to die anymore uh, and I'll just rejoice uh, and that I'm in him today uh, I say oh what a rock and then I'll say this. And this is where the whole message came from. I was in Virginia Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday. It's a crazy thing. I preached for Brother J.D. Monday and Tuesday. I started the meeting. Then I ended up down at Shelby and preached on Friday and helped close the meeting. Brother Sidney Weaver started the meeting in Shelby on Monday. And on Friday, he was at, in, in Virginia closing the meeting. Isn't that crazy? We had switch places. But when I was in Virginia on Tuesday, I'm just reading the Bible. I come across Exodus 17, and I saw something I really never saw before. I mean, I'd read it, but I never saw it. Some of you will get that. I want you to look again in verse number 6. Oh, what a rock because of the sanction it received. Look at verse number 6. The Lord's talking to Moses, and he says, Behold... I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb. The Lord just didn't tell Moses, smite the rock. The Lord said, I'll go before thee and I'll be standing on the rock. The Father is sanctioning the smoting of the rock. Over there in Matthew, or Matthew 3, 17, when Jesus uh, 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 was baptized of John the Baptist uh, and baptized into his uh, uh, ministry, uh, 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 the Bible says, And lo, a voice from heaven saying, uh, This is my beloved Son, uh, in whom I'm well pleased. Uh, of all the rocks there that day, uh, God said, I'm going to be standing on the right one. Uh, I'm going to sanction the right rock. Uh, you smote the one I'm standing standing on. Uh, hey, the Bible said in Isaiah 53, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Uh, hey, uh, uh, God uh, was in control of all of this. Uh, and the Lord sanctioned Jesus before the foundation of the earth uh, to die for our sins. Uh, and God gave his son for our sins. Uh, for God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son uh, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, uh, but have ever lasting life. Uh, it was God who sanctioned the rock. Uh, it was God who sanctioned the way of salvation. Uh, it's God still standing on our rock. Uh, it pleased the Father uh, and he granted the Lord to sit down next to him on the right hand of the throne. Uh, and the Bible said uh, and he put all principalities, dominions and everything under his feet. Uh, hey, uh, what a blessing. 
blessing. What a rock because of who sanctioned the rock. Hey, I'm glad. Hallelujah. I know the Lord and I know the right way because God sanctioned it and God made a way and I got a spiritual drink out of the rock one day. Oh, what a rock. Because of the sanction it received. No wonder the old songwriter wrote, Rock of Ages, cleft for me. Mm. No wonder the old hymn writer wrote, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Mm. No wonder the old songwriter wrote, Saved, saved, saved. Oh, I'm glad that Jesus was cleft on Calvary and made a way for us to be saved. I say, oh, what a rock. For 50 years, my life has been built upon Him. And I have no sad story to tell. I have nothing to complain or murmur about. The Lord's the best thing to ever happen to me. Oh, what a rock. If you don't know Him, oh, friend, you don't know what you're missing. There's nobody like the Lord Jesus Christ. He loved you. He died for you. He gave Himself for you that you could be saved and saved for all of eternity. Have you ever gotten to the rock? Have you ever gotten that spiritual drink? Jesus told that woman, well, you drink the water I give you, you'll never thirst again. Uh, that water that bubbles up within us by the Spirit of God. Hey, have you been saved by the good grace of God? If not, you can be. You can be saved today. Jesus wants to be your rock. See, this whole world is built on shifting sand. Do you ever wonder why a politician will run on one thing and then switch when he gets into office? Do you ever wonder why halfway through the uh, uh, going on at work they'll change the rules? Huh? Well, everything changes in this world. It just flips and flops and everything tries to appease people. Do you ever wonder why a lot of these churches are flipping and flopping? Used to they had preaching. They don't even have good teaching. Used to they had singing. Now they have junk. They're trying to appease people. Well, you can see in this text, you'll never appease people. Appease people. They're always going to murmur and chide and complain. But you get them to the rock, their life will change. Huh? I wonder today, have you been to the rock? If you've never been saved, in a moment we're going to have an invitation. We invite you to come. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and I shall be saved. You can be saved today. If you're here today and you're saved, when's the last time you appreciated your rock? You know, your, ha your home has been through some storms, but you're still sailing. Why? Because you're built on a rock. Uh, your livelihood's been through some storms, but you're still sailing because you're on the rock. Hmm? Uh, you've faced a lot of hardships and heartaches in this whole world. Job said man's days are few and full of trouble, but when you're on the rock, hey, the winds blow, but they don't blow you off the rock. When's the last time you thanked the Lord for being your rock? Being the one you can count on, the one you can trust in. In the wee hours of the night, when everybody's in bed and you have nobody to talk to, you can call on the Lord, and He's there to be a present help in time of need. He'll help you. He'll sustain you. He'll strengthen you. When's the last time you told Him, thank you for being my rock? I shudder to think what my life would be without you. When's the last time you preached? Oh, what a rock. I'm glad He's my rock. If He's not your rock, He can be today. We're going to invite you to come. You say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. You just let us know. We'll get somebody to take the Bible and show you how to be saved. You can be saved. It's easy to be saved. You just need to realize you need to be saved. If you've never gotten a spiritual drink from the Lord, you can today. If you have and you're thirsty, why don't you come get another drink? The Lord will help you. Let's all stand this morning. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. They're picking out a song. Folks have already started coming. If you're here today and not saved, we invite you to come. Take a drink, a spiritual drink that will change your life. While they're picking out a song, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do bless you. Thank you for being our rock. Thank you for being so good to us. Lord, in a crowd this size, I don't know anybody's heart, but there may be somebody here that doesn't know you. Lord, I pray the sweet Holy Spirit of God through cords of love will draw them. Lord, they'll come put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for your children. Some of them may have come in today just beat up by the world, just needed a drink. I pray you'd give them a drink. 
Lord, there may be some here today. Lord, they've gotten used to the rock. And they don't appreciate it like they used to. I pray, oh God, I pray that you'd refocus their, their, their sights on what a blessing it is to have you as our rock. Bless now in this invitation. We'll push you forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.